So this is Chris Clothier. And all that that you heard at the beginning of the podcast is what I put up with behind the scenes. So I am recording a new episode of the Grind Podcast. I'm super excited. My team's got me pumped up. Uh, I'm joined today behind the camera by Miss Sarah and Miss Isabella. And hey, look, we're we're ready to wrap up the uh, wrap up 2021. Ring in 2022, get everybody super fired up, super excited, and we're going to talk about something that many of you listeners may be contemplating right now. A couple of things they are. One, New Year's resolutions. Two, motivation to get out there and make it happen in the new year. What were you going to do? How are we going to make 2022 better than 2021? And I'm here to tell you that when the sugar high of Christmas and New Year's wears off, what are you going to be left with? What are you actually going to be left with when the motivation is gone? Are you going to be able to actually accomplish all the little things that you've written down or all the things that you've held yourself up to like this level you have to reach into the new year that may not necessarily be attainable at all times? And, you know, all of us as whether we're entrepreneurs, whether we're business people, whether we work for somebody else, whether we're real estate investors, you know, we all come up with, have the, the ability, I guess, to come up with these big grandiose ideas and the plans we want to achieve and how we want to hit them. And it could be personal, it could be business, it could be relationship, it could be faith, it could be uh, physical fitness, all these different avenues that we, we have a tendency to hold ourselves to this standard of right now, this time of year, where where we feel like there's this natural break, right? There's this, this. it's the end of the year, we're going into the winter solstice, it's going to be the the most days of darkness we're going to have all year, unless you're you know south of the equator and listen to me from internationally, which if you are, welcome, uh, thank you. And if you are north of the equator, you know, right now it's getting dark and it's going to be dark, you know, the, the longest days of darkness. So this tends to get us in this mood of, of what can I do to be better? What can I make, you know, do to make 2022 better? What are the things I can write down? New Year's resolutions that I'm going to resolve to do. And if you haven't already kind of come up with the with the realization that I'm anti all of this. I am anti New Year's resolutions. I'm anti um, coming up with these, you know, arbitrary things that I'm suddenly going to go from one day I don't do to the next day I do. And they're often big and grandiose. I think they hurt us as entrepreneurs. I think they hurt us as, as business people, as personal, you know, and even in our personal lives, they, this can be um, detrimental. And of course, I'm not the only one talking about this. You're going to read, you know, 27 different articles in the next, you know, three days. If you search online of people saying why you should and why you shouldn't do new year's resolutions. I'm going to tell you my philosophy on this and, and hopefully, you know, look, agree, disagree. doesn't really matter. I would love to engage in the conversation. If you have questions and want to talk about it, let's do it. Here's, here's why I come down on this. Um, new year's resolutions. So like I already pointed out, it, it feels like this natural time to do it. The calendar changes, the time's changing. You know, we're, we, we go from the, the shortest period of sunlight in the year. Now sunlight starts increasing every single day. So you feel like you've got this new growth happening. You start seeing the, you know, in a couple of months, some parts of the country will start seeing green again. Flowers will start blooming. The the tulips pop up in, in March and April. So all this new growth is happening. And we feel like it's natural for us to, to have this regrowth as well. Um, I'm a real believer. I will say this before I get go any further. I'm a real believer in, in the cycles of our bodies and the cycles, you know, that, that, that we do go through this, you know, from a, from a physical and mental standpoint, it is natural. It's real, but we make it unnatural when we set these, um, expectations of ourselves that, that are often difficult and rarely achieved. Okay. So let me, let me break that down just so nobody thinks that, that, uh, I'm saying that you know, what you can't do too often. If we're going to make these new year's resolutions, we make them damn near impossible, such as some of you right now may be contemplating, you know, beginning with a new year, I am going to exercise every single day. Like I'm in, I'm doing it. Some of you may back it down a bit and say, you know what? I'm going to exercise at least five days out of every single week, knowing 
full well that right now we're exercising one day every three weeks and it feels really good while we're in it. And then the next day we're like, damn, I'm sore. I don't want to do that again. And so that's a, that's a, that could be the scenario we're in. How are you expecting yourself to go from zero to full tilt in that manner, in that way? And when you can't, when I, and I, I keep using the word you, I want to make sure I say this clearly when we can't, like when, um, it's very, very, very difficult to go from zero to to all the way, full on, full tilt in a in a day. You know, today I'm not doing it, but I resolve that tomorrow I will. Can we resolve that I'm going to be mindful of the amount of exercise I'm getting and I'm gonna resolve to get more every seven days that I'm getting now. And that might be with, I am waking up tomorrow and I am going to exercise. And then I'm going to make it my mission to exercise again at the earliest possible time. Maybe it's three days, maybe it's four days, but I'm going to be back out there. That's something that is not only logical, but it's also practical and obtainable. And when we set goals that are Practical and obtainable. Well, I'm going to use the word logical too. Like it just it it it's not such a big ask of ourselves that we can't hit it. Then, you know, success leads to success. When I'm able to get up a second time and and work out a second time in a seven day period when I haven't done that in months, that feels good. And then I want to do that again. And now when suddenly, well, maybe I can add a third day and I do it this week and then I do it the following week, I do it the next week, that feels good. Now I'm taking these these logical steps to growth instead of day one, zero, day two, 100. When we're setting, if, if you're one of those listeners that says, look, I like setting um, new goals, resolutions, whatever you choose to call it, going into the new year, be mindful. Be mindful of the goals that you're setting and why you're setting them, how you're going to achieve them, and make it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the word. I'm not even sure if it's a, you know a word to use right here, but steppable. Make it where you can take steps along the way to growth, and not these outlandish, um, you know, ideas and expectations that you have to implement immediately. If your New Year's resolution is, I've had the idea of writing this book forever, and I'm gonna write my book this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. But if if you don't follow that with, and I'm going to start with, um, you know, the program I need or the typewriter I want to use or the, you know, and I, I don't start with setting the, the time aside in my schedule when this is my period. And it's not six hours, you know, every Saturday I'm going to write my book, but maybe it starts with, I'm going to take, you know, uh, 30 minutes, you know, on this day or that day or whenever, and I'm just going to start, start penciling it out. I resolve I'm going to write a page of my new book on my ideas uh, this week. Um, the By the end of January, I want to have a book chaptered out. I want to have you know all my thoughts and ideas down on what I'm going to do. You give yourself bite-sized steps to get to what your goals are. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm going to need to be real careful that I don't turn this into some kind of a goal setting session. Um, you know, we stick to the New Year's resolutions and that kind of thing because, um, you know, I'm not the I'm not the guy that goes out there and and again, if you know me by now, I don't have this long list of things I'm going to do. I don't have this, you know, before I die bucket list of all the all the things I have to accomplish. I like to do things very bite-sized, what's directly you know three feet in front of me, what am I into right now, what's really important to me, um, and I try and focus on those things. I try not to have too much that's out there, you know, that that um, because I find that that leads to disappointment in my own life. I, my own experience has just shown me that that, you know, that leads to regret, that leads to, let's call it shame, like I didn't, you know, I said I was going to do this and I didn't accomplish it. Um, I really, really like having smaller, bite-sized ideas, things I want to do directly there in front of me. You probably also know that I'm a big believer in surrounding myself with people that can help me get there. So, you know, as you're, as you're contemplating going into the new year, you might be thinking about, I need to set myself some New Year's resolutions. I want you to think about um, making them bite-sized, making them smaller, 
maybe it's it's in the immediate future. What do I want to try and, and do and accomplish? And little bitty adjustments. You know, instead of saying that suddenly I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. every day with my alarm clock, even though I normally hit snooze six times from 6 o'clock to 7 when I finally get my ass out of bed, maybe instead you say that I am going to only hit snooze three times for the month of January. Like I cannot hit snooze more than three times. So my alarm goes off at six, I'm up at 6.30. And then by the month of February, if I accomplish that, now it's gonna be, my alarm's gonna go off at 5.50 and I'm only gonna hit snooze three times. And I'm actually getting out of bed 10 minutes earlier than I had before. You know, if, if, if we think that we can suddenly change everything about who we are, what we do, our routines, because it's January 1st, because it's the new year and that's what I'm supposed to do, then what invariably happens, and I'm going to explain to, this, to you why this happens here in a second, that we don't accomplish anything. We end up uh, with regret. Like I said, we end up with shame. We end up with uh, you know, our New Year's resolution check-in um, the second week of January, and we realize that we've already blown every New Year's resolution we set. We are on pace to hit nothing. And um, that's a true story. That's something that many of us, you know, I'm talking it. You guys listen to it. Many of us have experienced. So why? Why is that? We'll go back to, to I know I talked about this early on in the podcast. One of those first, you know, I, I think probably seven or eight um, podcasts. I talked about my thoughts on motivation, you know, and, and this was taught to me luckily by a friend of mine who's actually my trainer. And, you know, uh, I ran a hundred mile ultra marathon many years ago, four years ago. And I, I saw my trainer uh, that I use now about, well, let's see here. It's been about 14 months ago. And he and I were talking and I said, hey, I, I want to get, you know, back up out there. I'm going to go do another 100 mile ultra marathon and I want you to be a big part of it. You know, I've, through, I've, I've recognized some of the mistakes I made with the first one, whether it's training or preparation. And I want you to be a big part of helping me reach my goal of running 100 miles. Now, since we're talking about goal setting and, you know, New Year's resolutions, I gave myself a two-year window to prepare, and I built these little little milestones along the way that I wanted to accomplish that had nothing to do with hitting and finishing a 100-mile ultramarathon, but had everything to do with the fitness level I needed to reach, the, um, you know, the, the way I had to have my body in tune and prepared for what I was going to do. So when we're talking, I'll never forget the first time we sit down, and he's like, all right, so you want to start training again? I said, yes, yes, we do. And... Um, He's like, why? And I said, well, I'm, I'm really motivated right now to, to, to get at it. And I mean, before I could even say anything else, he was like, you know, we're done. It's over. I'm not going to train you. There's, I'm just not willing to do it. And I said, why, why are you not willing to train me right now? And he said, because you're motivated. He's like, motivation is fleeting. Motivation comes and goes. Today is a random Tuesday. You're saying you're motivated to get it done. Well, what happens on Thursday when you didn't eat a proper diet on Wednesday? Maybe you stayed out a little bit too late. Maybe you, uh, you know... You didn't get enough rest as you woke up on Thursday morning, and today is a training day, but you're not motivated anymore because your body's not fueled. You're not, you know, rested properly. You don't really feel like doing it anymore. So today you're not motivated. So that's the day you don't do what you're supposed to do. He was like, "That's I'm not interested in in training anybody where, you know, if they're motivated, they're here. If they're not motivated, there's an excuse." And I thought, man, this is like mind blowing. This is. Um, I thought it spoke to me in so many different ways from the business aspect to the personal life aspect to the, to, you know, my, my fitness goals. And I've used it and talked about it ever since then that, that motivation is fleeting. He's right. You know, when we're not motivated, when some external factors affect our um, approach to whatever our goals are, to whatever it is we're trying to accomplish, it really lowers our ability to actually succeed. And then when we don't succeed, just as success leads to more success, failure can lead to more failure. The, as I said earlier, the shame, the disappointment, the realization that I'm not on track can knock us even more off track. So forget motivation. Motivation is not enough. There has to be some greater need, some greater need that you're trying to fulfill. For me personally, I looked at him and said, you know what? I I hope one day to have grandkids. You know, I've got five kids. Maybe I will have grandkids one day when I'm in my 70s and 80s. I've seen people 
uh, when I go out skiing, you know, at different ski resorts, I've seen, I, I'm always, I'm always intrigued by, um, when I was out in Utah, there was a group of people, they were all, they would call themselves the over 80 ski club. And they are a group of men and women that are there at the ski resort and they're all going up and they're skiing down and they're all skiing together and they're all over the age of 80. And I told him, I said, that's what I want to do. I want to be physically fit. I want to be active. I want to be doing stuff in my, you know, well into my yonder years. And he said, that's a reason for me to train you because that's something that you will get up every single day, no matter how you feel, no matter how you're fueled, no matter how you're rested. And you'll say that what I'm really doing today isn't about running some 100-mile ultra marathon. It isn't because I'm motivated or not motivated. It's because I have this, you know, this long-term vision, this thing I want to achieve, and what I do today helps me get there. When you're thinking about New Year's resolutions, when you're thinking about goal setting, when you're thinking about heading into the new year and how am I going to attack this and be successful at it, I want you to think about this. What can I do that's bite-sized, that's chunky, for lack of a better way to put it, that I can... I can tackle you know in little bitty pieces and stack on top of each other and somewhere down the line I am am accomplishing something I'm doing something I'm attaining something that I can't today don't don't give yourself these ultimatums of I must do x in order to be happy I must do x in order to have hit my resolve and fulfilled what I said I was going to do don't I implore you not to go that route Give yourself the flexibility, the latitude that says, I need to make small changes that over time, bite-sized, built up, will hit the big change I want, no matter what it is. If you want to accomplish something, if you want to do something, if you want to change something, whatever it is, start with things that are practical and obtainable and then build your plan that's going to get there. If you want to make massive change, okay, and massive impact, start small, consistent as often as possible. Because small, consistent, built up over time becomes massive in the end. Guys, as we approach the new year, I wish everybody a fantastic 2022. I hope that you, um, well, let me just say this differently. I'm blessed that you take the time to listen to the podcast. I really appreciate you being a part of it. I appreciate all the the info that we get back, all the sharing that you guys do, the liking of the different videos, the comments that you send us, the emails. It means a lot to us. The whole team loves it. Um, and we're just appreciative of you guys listening. All right. You, you listening, being a part of this, we're going to keep bringing you a great year of podcasts in 2022 until we talk again, guys, commit to the grind. We'll see you.